I can't do it. I just can't go on. Without a job, I'm a failure. To my family, to myself. If I could just find a job. If I could just find a job. Who am I kidding? There aren't any jobs. I can't do it. I just can't go on. Good evening, friends. I am calling on the people of America tonight to help in carrying out the task that is important to them and to their government. It is about finding jobs for willing workers who are not working through no fault of their own. We will survey the needs of the workers and industry to see if we can find a better long-range plan of finding jobs than we have now. Do you really think Mr. Roosevelt's going to help us? Do you think he'll help us make things better? Yes. He's a good man and a mighty president. I think he really cares about us. Can we go meet him? Can we? Please? I know if I see him face to face, he'll help us with everything we need help with. Francis, he's a very busy man. He's the president. You can't just go meet the president. And even if you could, it's too far and too expensive. He'll never be able to help us if he doesn't know what we need. Dear Mr. Roosevelt, my name is Francis. Since my father lost his job, we don't have any money. My father just has to find a job. He doesn't smile anymore, and he never laughs. I can't find that magic sparkle he used to have in his eyes. I've never seen my father like this. Everything has changed since he lost his job. At night, I close my eyes and try to remember what my father looked like when he was working. But every time I close my eyes, my father disappears. Please find a job for him. I will never ask for anything else for as long as I live. Your friend, Francis. Good evening, friends. I come before you at this hour to speak to you about something that is of great importance to me. Not long ago, I called upon the people of America to help in carrying out a task of great importance to them and to their government. I spoke about finding jobs for willing workers who are not working through no fault of their own. I directed this message to the unemployed men of our great nation. This, dear friend, should be corrected. I failed to realize the importance of this matter to the children of these unemployed men. You see, my new friend Frances wrote me and informed me how she feared for her father and for her family. She asked nothing for herself, but only for a job for her father. Frances, please listen to me carefully. I promise to restore the confidence of the American people and to bring us all out of this depression. First, we are giving employment to one quarter of a million of the unemployed, especially the young men who have...